You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. So Brian Kelly met with uh, reporters after practice on Tuesday. Of course, he talked about the quarterbacks. That's what everyone really wanted to know. Did not name a starter yet. Said they'll probably publicly name a starter early next week, maybe Monday or Tuesday. But late this week and into the weekend, they are fully turning their attention to Florida State. And by then, you should well have your number one guy in place. The one thing that is certain is the guy calling the plays is Mike Denbrock. And... As much as we have talked about all of the changes with this LSU program uh, so far throughout this fall camp and all the conversations we've had, we haven't talked a ton about Denbrock. And it's an interesting question. It's interesting that we haven't, especially because of all the attention we've given that, that staff position really over the last half decade. I mean, if you think about the end of the Les Miles, Cam Cameron era when that was so maligned because as much as people blamed Les for meddling, Les and Cam were in lockstep. I mean, there, there was no doubt. Those two saw eye to eye with what they wanted to do. And of course, from there, Steve Enzminger becomes interim OC, LSU opens up the offense. Then they bring in Matt Canada. It's a disaster. Then he goes back to Enzminger. They win a championship. Joe Brady got so much credit that as we've talked about here, probably more credit than he deserved. Even Tommy Moffitt said that sitting two feet from me in this studio several weeks back. Not to say Brady didn't bring uh, value, but probably got too much credit. Well, Ed Ogeron then tried to recreate that again with Jake Peets and DJ Mangus, and it blew up. And as much as we've had this um, this up and down uh experience with LSU's offensive coordinators. It's surprising we have we aren't talking more about Mike Denbrock, but Brian Kelly was asked about Denbrock and certainly he feels like he got the best guy possible. I just think that, you know, he's always been a really smart, intuitive play caller. That's why I've asked him to to be my play caller here at the the top of the top. This is LSU, right? We're here to win a national championship, so I'll, I get a chance to pick the best play callers in the country. I think he's the best play caller, and I think he's. I've been together with him for a long time. I just think he's uh, intuitive. He's smart. He knows football. Um, he knows the offense that I like to run and what I like to do. So that's obviously really key because our conversations are on point. I don't have to explain a lot to him. He can go and go, I know what you're looking for there. Let's go ahead and do that. I do think it's important that there's a synergy between the head coach and the play caller. So what you don't want to have happen is have friction where, look, that was a reality with Les Miles and Jimbo Fisher. That became the reality in 2009, 2009 with Gary Croton. I think you want the head coach and coordinator to have that synergy, to, to, ha to think alike about what the objective is. So that way, when the coordinator is calling plays, coach is head coach is okay with what coordinator is calling. What you don't want is a situation like with Les and Cam when what they were doing was flawed. This has had plenty of success. Mike Denbrock um, is 58 years old. He and Brian Kelly coached together at Grand Valley State. When Brian Kelly was the head coach, Denbrock was an OC from 92 to 95. In 92, 93, and 94, three straight years. Three straight years, they led their conference in scoring and in total offense with Mike Denbrock calling plays. In a weird twist, Denbrock stayed at Grand Valley but switched to be the defensive coordinator. After that, he went and coached for the Buffalo Destroyers, got back into college football as a position coach at Stanford, and then went to Notre Dame in the early 2000s, 2002 to 2004 as an as an offensive tackle and tight ends coach. Then went to Washington, Indiana State, 
And then when Brian Kelly got hired at Notre Dame in 2010, Dan Brock joined him. First as the tight ends coach, then as the wide receivers coach, then eventually in 2014 as the offensive coordinator. That Notre Dame team in 2014 was not very good offensively. They were 74th in the country in scoring and 67th in total offense. They were very middling to bad in 2014. Remember, that was the Notre Dame team that beat LSU in the Music City Bowl. That was a team that struggled to find consistency at quarterback, and the, the results were not great. They averaged 27 a game, and they put up 406 yards a game. So let me not minimize that, but 67th in the country, it puts up 406 yards a game. For this LSU team, I might be kind of okay if we look at the end of the season, they put up 400 yards a game in, in offense. But I'm just talking about with you know, relative to the rest of the country. After 2014, uh, Den Brock became the assistant head coach and wide receivers coach at Notre Dame in 15-16, and then he left for Cincinnati. When he got to Cincinnati, they were downright bad. His first year, he called plays from, from 17 to this past year. So five years calling plays at Cincinnati. I don't want to bore you with numbers, but I think what you're going to understand here is a trend. In 2017, Mike Denbrock's first year at Cincinnati, they were 99th in the country in total offense and 123rd in scoring. It was not good. In 2018, they were a little bit better. 101st in total, 110th in scoring, from 123 to 110. But then in year three came the colossal jump, the monumental leap. They went up to 23rd in total offense and 23rd in scoring. Then in 2020, they were 19th in total offense, 15th in scoring offense. And then this year, this past year, they were one of the best in the country at Cincinnati. Sixth in total offense, eighth in scoring offense, and they set school records for points and touchdowns. They were incredible. Every year, they got a little bit better, a little bit better, and then year three, boom, top 25, then top 20, then top 10. I don't know if I'm telling you there's going to be a direct correlation here that LSU offensively is going to look like Cincinnati did in his first year as the OC, where they were 99th in the country in total offense and 123rd in scoring. But the point is, with a five-year sample, it was it, you sometimes see that. You know, sometimes it's hard to see the forest through the trees. You know that, that expression. But when you can pull back to the 10,000-foot view, and you can see the whole landscape, things stand out. Like when a coach takes a job. I mean, first one that pops into mind, Matt Rule at Baylor. Matt Rule inherited, inherited an awful situation at Baylor. I think won one game his first year. By the time he left, he had transformed Baylor's program. You might not see it in that first year or in the total record, but when you look, when you pan out, you see everything that he did in his time there, what he inherited from Art Bryles, the mess, winning one game his first year and then bringing them to where they were, it's incredible. Similar with Denbrock at Cincinnati, where they were so bad when he got there and then became top 10. I mean, that was a giant part of that build with he running the offense. I think they've got better talent at LSU here, clearly, when you've got the type of weapons on the outside. So much will depend on the offensive line's ability to gel, the quarterback's ability to protect the football, all those things we know. But when you got a guy that's 58 years old that has been calling plays since the early 1990s, and has shown the ability to adapt with the times as offenses have evolved, see what's happened the last five years at Cincinnati, that's a great sign that they do have the right guy there running this offense. We've talked so much about how approachable and how father-like he feels uh, with, these, with these young guys. So I'm excited to see Mike Denbrock and to see how he structures, how he calls a game uh, with the weapons that he's got. Because this will be the most explosive receiving group he's ever had at any of his stops. And they've set some records at places where he's been. They've also had a, a slow build at times in other spots as well. Uh, how much does Mike Denbrock's first year in Baton Rouge resemble his first year in Cincinnati, which was not very good? How much does it resemble his first year in South Bend, which was 
okay, you know, 28 points and 400 yards a game. How much does it resemble what we saw when it was at Grand Valley or this most recent team at Cincinnati when they were top 10? We'll start to get those answers uh, when they tee it up and kick it off a week from Sunday. But um, I understand uh, Brian Kelly's confidence. I think it's well-placed uh, in Mike Denbrock. Uh, one more thing from from Brian Kelly, though. Uh, he did was asked if Denbrock has changed at all since the last time they worked together at Notre Dame uh, in the mid-2000s. I don't know that there's been, you know, this, you know, epiphany of he's, you know, changed as much as he likes to do what I like to do. We want to control the line of scrimmage. Uh, we want physicalness within the offensive structure. We want to utilize a tight end and three wide receivers. And, and, and we want to push the ball down the field. We want, we want big chunk plays. And I think that that's kind of stayed consistent with, um, with his philosophy. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.